<laughs> At least that's how I felt when I'm trying to avoid being sick by the virus. I always felt that I'm going left, right, up, down, just trying to stay afloat. But thank God I'm uh, well and healthy right now. And if you have been wondering, that's why I've been away for two weeks uh, with no videos on my channel because I've been under the weather. Now, today's video is about expectancy, which is something really important that you need to take care of if you are a systematic trader. Because if you're a systematic trader, you need to have some measure that how your system will perform in the future. Expectancy is something popularized by Van Tharp, which is really the king of uh, position sizing, expectancy, and he did so many things in the trading world, at least in the retail world, that he revolutionized everything. Now, Van Tharp did many books on the subject, and uh, I have <laughs> this huge book. <laughs> it's a great book, actually. And expectancy is at the root level of this book because everything is built upon this knowledge of your system. All position sizing, SQN score, and so on and so forth, they're all based on this expectancy. What's really interesting is all the videos I've checked on YouTube and I've checked articles on the, on the net, they're all refer to an old equation, which is not good based on Van Tharp himself. This is, if you notice, I have the second edition. And in his second edition book, he mentioned this, that he knows even that all over the internet, the equation for calculating expectancy, it is the wrong one. And of course he makes the right one here. But you are watching Stadways' channel and I will show you the right way to calculate expectancy for your system. So let's start with the definition of expectancy. Expectancy is defined as what do you expect from your system giving a significant number of trades. So let's say if expectancy is $1, then you expect to make $1 per trade. So 1,000 trades will give you $1,000. That's the general definition of expectancy. Like I mentioned everywhere, if you look in the internet, you will find this equation. This is the most popular uh, definition that you'll have on expectancy, which is the average win in dollars times the average win percent minus the average loss in dollars times the average loss percent. And this in turn, it's the average trade. So if you build any trading system, and you will get a figure which is called the average trade, which is basically averaging all the profit and loss, uh, getting the total, dividing it by the total number of trades, and you get the average trade. The average trade is the expectancy per this equation. Of course, this is the wrong equation, which is plastered all over the internet, like I mentioned. And this is the wrong way because that's the average trade. Of course, the average trade is a good measure, at least to know the system, you will know on average you will make X amount of dollars per uh, trade. Of course, if it's positive, that means your system is profitable. And if it's negative, that means your system is unprofitable. So let's say you're averaging minus $100. That means over long period of trades, let's say 100 trades, 1000 trades, whatever, you will have a negative expectancy, meaning you will start to losing money. So number one important thing about expectancy is you need it to be positive. Now, Van Tharp says, look, this is the wrong way. This is the average trade, which doesn't take risk into consideration. So the right equation for the expectancy is as follows. So this is the right equation, which is still the average trade, which is average win dollar uh, times average win percent minus average loss in dollars times average loss percent divided by the average risk. Why the average risk? Because we want to know how much are we making per a unit of risk. So let's say you are risking $100 per trade. You want to know your uh, expectancy in terms of that unit. So if you're risking $100 and your expectancy is one, that means you're making $100 per $100 risk. And therefore, when we compare two systems, if one system have an expectancy of one and the other one has an expectancy of 10, then the 10 is better than the one because 
with the same risk in place, then we want to make more returns per same unit of risk we are taking. By the way, if you are new to this channel, welcome aboard. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alec Casey and you're watching Statoasis channel where we discuss finance, investing, algorithmic trading and everything else in between. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the great content that I post on this channel. So here is an example of trading system. It's just a simple example. Let's assume we have 11 trades. This is the initial risk when we put the trade on. Say we put the trade on and we're uh, putting aside $1,000 as a stop loss. And then this trade made 2317 Second trade, again, we initially are willing to lose $1,000, but we lost a 13 Third trade and so on and so forth till the 11th trade. We can see from this system we have 55% chance of winning and 45% chance of losing trades. The average win is $3167. The average loss is $1200. The risk we are taking initially, that's the average, $891. And of course, if we take the average trade, which are the average of all these, this is 1182. Now, the first equation that I showed you, that is this, the original expectancy. And you can see that the original expectancy, it's only the average trade. And like I mentioned, Van Tharp suggests that you divide this number by your average risk. So this is the average risk of all the trades, which is 891. So if we divide 1182 by 891, then we get this number, which is 133. That means for every $1 we are risking, we expect to get $1.33, which is of course very good. It is positive and it is more than the risk. So we're always, not always, on average, we're getting more reward than we are risking. Now, Van Tharp goes a step further, which what I'm gonna teach you now, and this is how he recommend we use expectancy. You see, if we divide the PL of the trade by the initial risk, we get something called the R multiple, the risk multiple. So in this case, this trade has a risk multiple of 2.32. That means we made 2.32 times the amount of risk we were willing to lose. And here, we lost 0.81 the amount of risk we were willing to lose. That means we lost less than when we initially accepted. And again, uh, we divide, basically we are dividing the PL by the total risk. So this R multiple also has an average. And that average is 1.21. This is more accurate representation of the system. And you can see it's very close to the enhanced expectancy but this is what Dr. Van Tharp recommends to use as the expectancy of your system. So this is what Dr. Van Tharp recommends to use, which is taking all your PNL, dividing it by the initial risk, and then averaging out all these numbers, which is the R multiple, and you will arrive to a number. This number should be positive for your system to make money long term. And of course, the higher it is, the better, because the, the higher than one, that means you're always making, not always, on average, you are making more money per amount of dollars risk. Now, there is another very important number that plays a big part in deciding what system to pick out of, let's say you have 10 systems and they have different expectancy numbers. Which one would you pick the best to trade? So that other number is the number of trades. So imagine you have these two systems, system one and system two. So system one expectancy is 1.5 R. System two expectancy is a lot less. In fact, it is 20% of this, which is 0.3 R. But system one trades 100 trades in a given period of time, and system two trades 800 trades. We are risking 1% per trade, so you can see the result because we are making one and a half R. That means I am making 1.5% profits on average per trade 
times 100, that means I'm going to make 150%. In system 2, I'm making 0.3R, and again, I am risking 1%. So I'm making 0.3% per trade, but because I have 800 trades, my total returns in the same period, it's 240%. So system two makes more money than system one, even though it is only a fifth of the expectancy score. And that is because of the number of trades. So a number of trades, not only statistically significant, it is also an important part of the equation to make more money. So combining these two, the expectancy number times the number of trades you have in the system in a given period, because uh, you need to uh, compare systems together, like uh, 10 years worth of data, then 10 years worth of data. You cannot bring the expectancy out of one year worth of data and compare it to a system that trades over 10 years. Uh, worth of data because you'll have different number of trades and the number of trades is very important to get a better idea of the expectancy of your system in the future now what if you don't know the initial risk you remember in the excel sheet we have uh, initial risk for every single trade and that is usually the stop loss but what if you don't have a stop loss in your system what if your system let's say you exit on an indicator so in that case, you can take the average of all your losses and assume that as your initial risk. So let's say your system has 100 trades. Over the 100 trades, the average of all the losses in those 100 trades, let's say $1,000. So then you assume that your initial risk for every trade is $1,000. Now also the expectancy gives you another measure that you can uh, take a look at although don't take this literally i'm just giving you the concept here so you can see here i calculated the standard deviation of this r multiple uh, which is the expectancy so the standard deviation is 2.52 that means 65 percent of the trades will be between minus 132 to 3.73 this is of course based on a uniform uh, curve which of course uh, doesn't apply on all systems but it just gives you an idea that you can use the standard deviation to have an expectation of where the range of all your average trades will be and of course 95 percent of the trade is two standard deviation so that means we expect the trades to be minus 3.84 r to 6.26 r this method of standard deviation is an approximation of course and like i mentioned in fact, there are no systems that have a uniform curve, but this is a, uh, a better way to look at our system. As always, if you have any questions, any comments, please do so below the video, and I'll be more than happy to answer you. And if you want to take this further and be a part of my inner circle, you are more than welcome to join the Discord server through the link below, where I host live weekly question and answer session to take subjects like these even further with more examples alongside the tactical asset allocation portfolio signals and more portfolios that are coming to the discord server soon as always good luck with your trading good luck with your investing stay safe and i'll see you soon